gentlemen. <clears throat> My name is George Thorman. I'd like to welcome you again to an evening of local history. Uh, in the last two sessions we've had, my guest has been Donald Cousins, and I wasn't going to have him tonight. Uh, I'm going to change, but uh, we started in the last two meetings by doing Talbot Street starting at the West End. We got about as far as the Talbot Hotel on St. Catherine Street, and we decided that we'd finish the East End of the City. And Don, I'd uh, like to thank you for coming on the program, and uh, uh, I know how busy you are. Again, we're showing this set of slides from the Cameron Collection, which was amassed by Sheriff Cameron St. Thomas and uh, is still in the city and will remain in the city. Uh, <clears throat> last uh, month when we showed the picture that we're going to show you shortly, uh, somebody phoned up and uh, knew a lot about that picture, but he didn't leave his name. And Don Cousins would like to get in touch with him. Now, Don, I think we'll start with that picture, which is on Hiawatha Street. Yeah, this is on the east side of Hiawatha, just Just a minute, we're not of, on the screen. There we are now. Just right. north of uh, Talbot Street. And uh, the, the gentleman that phoned up during the program, or before we got home, told my wife that the place on the right was his brother-in-law's, and it belonged to Char Charlie Pierce. But he didn't say who he was, and I'd like to know. And uh, if that gentleman is watching, I wish he would phone up and, uh, and make himself known to me. Uh, it, as I said, Charles Pierce on the right, the extreme right, the large building in the middle was Thomas Trigger blacksmith shop, both blacksmiths, and Billy Batty lived in the house on the right-hand side. Uh, this was in 1905 that this was, and Billy Batty was quite a character around town. And the next uh, slide is a picture of Billy Batty. Uh, Billy Batty was a chimney sweep, a chimney sweep, and he also sold newspapers. He did odd jobs around for people, and uh, he lived in various places besides this one here. He lived over by Hooping Cobb Park, and uh, over by the gas works. Uh, Loblaws is there now. Well, you, if your child had whooping cough, you took it over and you inhaled the gas fumes, and it was supposed to be a remedy for the whooping cough. Billy got in trouble one time for selling newspapers on Sunday. And he got so disgusted with the whole thing that he gave up selling newspapers. He used to sell the Sunday papers in St. Thomas, but he was breaking the Lord's Day Alliance, I guess. He was a, quite a character around St. Thomas. I believe he died around 1910. Very few people would remember Billy Batty. And he had a family, but I don't believe there are any of his descendants around today. Now, just down Hiawatha Street, we're repeating a little bit from the last show, but down Hiawatha Street, this building still stands. It's an apartment building uh, today, but it was built for the, by the Church of Christ Disciples as a college. It was Sinclair College, and uh, they trained men for the ministry in this college here, and it lasted for about 15 years, I think, until about 19. Well, didn't the, did the school board eventually buy that building? Uh, I don't know, but I, I believe I remember there was an overflow from some of the public schools, like Manitoba Street School, that used that building as a public school. I, I don't know whether they ever owned it. How's that changed? It doesn't quite look like that today. Is the roof line the same, or has that been changed? Well, that it's, it's pretty close to being the same, I think. Uh, that dormer at the front is gone, but I think it's, uh, I think well, it's pretty side? close. Which side, east or west side? Of it's on the east side of Hiawatha, side. at the corner of Owasa Street. Oh, yeah. And it's still there, very much in evidence today. Now, we're back up on the Talbot Street now, and this elegant building stood where the Capitol Theater stands today. And uh, originally it was the residence of Matthew Penhale. And in 1900, the railway men acquired it and it became the YMCA. And it did service until 1914 when the present YMCA was built. Well, Matthew Penhale, that must have been one of the most palatial houses in St. Thomas. Yeah, I think it might have been. It, it, uh, it was a very elegant building and a very large building and uh, very much used by the railway men. Well, uh, tell me about that railway YMCA. The YMCA in St. Thomas goes back to about 1860-something. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Anybody yeah, but before, the, before this, they just had rooms. I see. They just had uh, rooms over stores oh, yeah. and things like that. And in 1900, they, uh, they bought this building, and it was quite a, quite a step for them to mm -hmm. buy that. I, I, I forget what they paid for. I, I think it was something in the range of, of $4,000, and they spent another 4000 renovating it. <laughs> wouldn't mind taking a mortgage to get a house like that for four thousand dollars even at today's interest rate. <laughs> Fine. That was where the Capitol Theater is now. Yes, yes. Now we're up to the corner of St. Catherine Street, uh, the northwest corner. We showed this last time. Uh, it's where Coffee's News Depot is today. And just next to that, just west of that. Now the, the second store on the west was Pollen Hardware. He, he, uh, Frank Pollen ran that hardware store, and he went to uh, to uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco and became a millionaire over there. But it was the four. It was later taken over by McMurtry's and uh, then Sanderson, and it's the forerunner of Sanderson's Hardware today. That was an early McMurtry store. There. Yes, it was. And uh, Mrs. McNulty is the one who built the block. That is just the part that coffee's in, just the yes. right hand half of that picture. I believe it's Egan Brothers that were in there. Uh, Phil Egan uh, was in there at that time. Now, Talbot Street isn't paved in that either, is it? Uh, no. Now, this is down St. Catherine Street at the corner of Kane Street. Now, the building behind the car is still standing, a grocery yes. store. It was built by Reynolds. I didn't know uh, that. I think uh, C.J. Reynolds. Uh, uh, the, you can see the nameplate on that building. It's all is been painted red now. But yes, it, it hasn't changed its line very much, has it? Th there's another nice old building that it would be nice to have a picture of on, a, on Hiawatha Street at the corner of, uh, I forget the street. It was a store, too. It, was, it has a nameplate on it, Stover. Peter Stover built that as a store. Well, wasn't there a store in this building? Uh, there still is. Still, that still is today. Yes, yeah. I don't know. I think it's the Dixie Dairy Bar. That's right. Something like that. The building on the right is gone, and it has been gone for a, a long time. I don't ever remember it. This is a car, a streetcar, that went down by the, ho the Wabash Station and came up St. Catherine Street. Went down, I believe it went down Station Street and around and up St. Catherine Street. Now, further down uh, to the east of the last picture, this is Herd's Mill, and it's presently uh, the uh, Day, Day family are running this. Uh, Elgin Handles. Yeah. Now, listen, tell me something, <coughs> Don. The, uh, the building in the immediate foreground and <coughs> to the right is uh, the, the Herd's Mill, is it not? Or is well, it the it, building behind? It's all Herd's Mill, I believe. I well, believe it's all Herd's Mill. Uh, no, I'm not certain of that. No. Then uh, uh, that was eventually taken over by the Smith family, wasn't it? Who started Elgin Hamm. George P. Smith. Yeah. And Harvey J. ran it for a long time, and then uh, he sold it to Hap Day. Hap Day. And Hap Day's son has taken it over. And Terry. They made a very successful business of it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very old business. Yes. In town, probably next to Erie Ironworks, the oldest industry that we have in town. I think so. I can't find uh, when Herds first came uh, in the paper, but they came about the 1870s. I think I may have uh, that. They were they in came. Uh, They came from Lambeth, yes. Yes, and then they were down east somewhere, uh, or west somewhere, too, until they moved here. Yeah, I think I might have that date when they came here. I think one of the reasons they moved here, uh, any of those people who were making handles or wheels, was because there was um, quite a bit of hickory here. Oh, is that right? And uh, uh, that hickory was in good supply here until the uh, sap suckers, until uh, the chestnut trees died. Then the sap suckers attacked the hickory trees. And now oh, yeah. all the hickory comes from uh, Georgia, I believe. Mm -hmm. They certainly had uh, good transportation facilities right beside the railway yes, there. Yes, yes. Now we're back up to the corner uh, Talbot and St. Catharines. We're looking eastward down the street, and on the left, you can just see the old Arlington Hotel. It was built as the Elgin House, McNulty House, and Patrick McNulty ran it for a while, and he died, and his wife ran well, it for many years. Let's get this cleared on. This is the picture just on the left? Just on the left. Yeah. You can just see a bit of it, yeah. of the McNulty House there. And on the right 
is the Dake House, the old Dake House. Right across the street from it. Yeah, on the south side of the street. Uh, now, if you watch this, this uh, sleigh, the sleigh and the horses, in the next picture, that's the same sleigh going down the street, the photographer. Uh, probably uh, it was Scott that took the picture. And I think we said you were, we were looking east on that last picture. Yes, we were. Were we? Yes. Now we're looking south. We're looking south down Railway Street. That's right. Now Princess Ave. The Imperial Bank on the right is still standing there. And uh, not much else in that picture would so, be standing today. Well, this picture then is about 19, uh, what, 10 around then? Or? Well, maybe a little before that. I, I rather think it might be closer to 1900 that this picture. Now the building on the left was standing into the 1930s at least and there's the White Rose Canadian Oil Company oh. took over that building and it was still standing and doing service as a service station mm -hmm. in 1932. I don't remember the building myself although it could have gone up into the 40s. No, I don't remember it either. Well of course mm -hmm. I wasn't here then but uh, um, there's still a service station on that site, isn't there? Uh, no, not anymore. There was for a number. There was, yes, there was at one, oh, up until about 1950, possibly. But it, when they uh, changed uh, Princess Ave to put the cenotaph in there, oh yes, that's when the uh, service station disappeared.